have to do that with your face. <laughs> I know. What is that? What am I doing with my face? It's like you're going like. I was just getting hyped. Oh, okay. Oh, you're you. Uh, <clears throat> wait till you hear my first story. I'm gonna have to wait until it's first. I mean, it's gonna be truly, truly. Amazing. Your opener or your first story? My first story. Okay. Unbelievable. Okay, you ready to start? Ready. All right. So you have to share some bad news with your coworkers. Okay. okay. So how do you do that? I mean, do you just say like? Hey, how are you? I hope you're having a good day. Uh, your sales results are down. Or do you say, hey, you're having a good day. Your sales results are down, but I think you can do better. Thumbs up. Isn't that the, the positive sandwich? Yes. Positive correction, positive. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So what they have found uh, in Chatham University is that if you need to say some bad news to your coworkers, that instead of just saying like, oh, your sales suck, is that you say your sales are bad. And then, but I think you can do better, like using that thumbs up. And if you can use emojis. Emojis? Yes. If you start using emojis when you're spreading bad news around, is that it makes people feel like you're more human. That's interesting. Because when I get emojis, I think it's immature. Do you? Especially in a professional setting, like when a manager sends out, you know, we did great this quarter, thumbs up celebration hat <laughs> just like i think it's immature well you know maddie and i were talking about this and i said you would be really bad if you sent out like the poop emoji yes well okay. that would reflect my numbers from last quarter okay you know what she told me hmm. her mom thought it was um smiling chocolate ice cream <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> want to come over for dessert poop emoji <laughs> the poop emoji you know and but the, you know the cow emoji you don't want to use that i don't even know if i've ever seen the cow emoji yeah it's a Muji. Oh, yes. We're starting out on a good note, aren't we? I apologize <laughs> on her behalf. Yeah. Buckle up. It's another <laughs> Kim Commando today. Exciting episode. You're not going to believe my story coming up. But you, first, yeah. You, you said it right before the show. Oh. I'm going to be shocked. You are. You are going to be shocked. All you right. are going to be shocked. It's I'm something ready. that happened to me. Oh, it's a personal story. Yes. So I didn't see it in uh, all the... The blogs or the aggregators, they haven't had it. Not yet. Got a hold of it? Not yet, but it will. And of course... Um, hold on. Sorry. There we go. And of course, it's not just me here. No. It's Andrew Babinski. Hi, Kim. Bum, 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 bum. Got to get a sound effects budget. Oh. Literally. I mean, I appreciate the effort, and I, I like hearing them, but we need a sound effects budget. Okay, first we you need... only have two. <laughs> you have bum, 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 and... <laughs> Bum, 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 bum. Okay. Well, um, you know, if we have more viewers, yeah. then we can get advertisers. If you want real sound effects and not bum, 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 <laughs> just share the podcast. That's it. Just and one person. The live stream. Yeah. Whatever you're watching right now, Twitch, YouTube, Rumble, Facebook, just share it with someone. You like the show, they'll like it too. Uh, and then we have Madeline Smith coming up. And she's, she's on TikTok. And mm -hmm. then, so somebody thinks like you're messing around. Or she, a woman thinks like her guy is messing around. Usually, yeah. This, this is the, uh, what is it called? What does she call it? The loyalty test? Yes. And so you could pay her to go get the guy. Uh, do you, I didn't know that there was a transaction involved. I thought she just did it for fun. Oh, no. I, th I think you have to pay like 30 bucks. Oh, that's not bad. Maybe not all the time. Uh, and then you're going to be talking about NASA? Yes. NASA is looking for volunteers. To do what? Well, that's the story. Oh, so this okay. is the tease part. <laughs> That's the body part. Oh. So I'll tie you in a little bit, Kim. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a professional broadcaster. All right. So let me tell you what happened to me. All right. Where normally this is the part of the podcast where I'd say, like, here are five things that you need to know about tech. But this okay. trumps it? This tr trumps it. Okay. So Friday night, uh, I had made some grilled chicken and a salad. Are you just at home? Just at home. Barry and I are at home. Uh, Barry's having his gin martini. I'm having my lemon drop martini. Is this before or after you sent me the picture of the largest antenna I've ever seen in my life at someone's house? <laughs> this is one of This is after. Okay. This is after. <laughs> okay. Uh, and we're just sitting there just having dinner, you know, husband and wife type yeah. of thing. And all of a sudden, I start hearing helicopters, very loud helicopters. And I'm like, do you hear that? And Barry's like, yeah, what is that? And then all of a sudden we see like searchlights going over our house. What did you do? The helicopters. Okay. 
And I'm like, oh, wow, this is really something. So we look out, and you know our house. We have a great view of the city. So, like, on your property, the searchlights, or around your property? No, no, going onto our patios, into our pool. Because you have that, like, desert landscaping area that's under your patio there? Yes. Okay. And so, and, you know, and obviously the, the house is gated and fenced mm-hmm. and all the other stuff. Uh, and then we look out, and we see the whole subdivision probably... A dozen cop cars. Oh, that fast. Okay. And so I go out on the patio. You know me. Sure. <laughs> like, why not? <laughs> <laughs> you run into the burning building <laughs> instead of running away. And I say to a cop who I see far away, I say, hey, what's going on? And he says, get in the house. Get in the house. And I said, I'm sorry. What's happening? Kim. That's not, excuse me, officer. Do you know who I am? (laughs) Tell me what's going on. I want to know what's happening. He's yelling, get in the house. What if they're about to open fire on someone? So I said, he said, uh, he said, it's the uh, gang from Chile. Yeah, I heard about this. That's in your neighborhood right now. And I look at Barry and Barry's like, Oh, the Chilean guy, and he knows all about it. I don't know anything about it. Of course not. You know, I'm sitting there like, do you guys need any water? You know, Uh, and so as it turns out, they had targeted our street, and they were not targeting our house. They were targeting the house next door where nobody was, but they had actually gotten a house uh, about three doors down from us, and they're using cell phone jammers, and Wi-Fi jammers. And so this way, they, they wait until they, until you're not home. See, we right. were home. Okay, we had the lights on. We had music playing, that whole thing. They absolutely had cased your house, but they're not going to rock. If you don't know the story, here in the valley in North Phoenix. Well, it's not just in the valley. It's, well, it's actually all throughout the country. Oh, I didn't know that part. Oh, I thought yes. it was just because it's mm-hmm. happening in tons of neighborhoods right. where people are not home and getting robbed. And they're coming home to their houses destroyed and, and all their valuables stolen. So the guy down the street, he left to go to dinner at 5 o'clock. At 5.05, he's sitting, I don't know, some restaurant nearby, obviously. And he gets a notification that his cameras are offline. But that's why they're using the jammers. Exactly. But he thinks like, oh, the internet went down. Sure. He comes home and he finds out that they took $25,000 worth of cash that he had in his master bedroom. Jewelry, art, worth about hundred grand. Okay, so now, so that has, that I didn't know that that happened. Okay, so all of a sudden I'm standing there, and again, I'm on the patio. You didn't listen to the officer who said no. get in the house. Hmm. Fair enough. And um, the, the SWAT team starts approaching our house. And here, I have some videos, some surveillance videos. Okay, that's them coming in our front gate, or a, a second gate. Yeah. Okay, this I mean, is... Big step. The dog. What's that? dog's amazing. 30 feet from your front door? Right. Okay. And I think we have some videos too. Oh, that's... Oh, yeah. Look at them coming into the property. So, obviously, they think someone's hiding on your property. Yes, they do. They thought that they saw somebody jump our fence. Uh, So, they surrounded the entire house. That dog is amazing. Where are you at this point? Uh, I'm inside. So, you did finally go inside? I did go inside. When I... And here they are in the back patio. One of the patios. There's too. Barry's antenna. Yes, you see the antenna. Thank goodness the burglars didn't get it. They cased the entire property. How long were they there for? About an hour. Okay. Wow. Yeah. About an hour. Just walking around, looking around. At one point there, and you know, and they're all carrying the AK forty sevens. Right. Okay. Uh, but they walked all around the property, stood there, waited until, you know, it, it seemed like everything had happened. So Here's how it came down. Here's what happened. So we are inside the house and all this is going on. And, but we can see through the glass to see where all the cops are and everything. So as I mentioned, they wanted the house next door to us. Um, They they were not home. But when they figured out that they weren't home, see, they dropped the cell phone jammers and the Wi-Fi jammers uh, on our borderline property. In the cul-de-sac, right by our house, was the getaway car. And it was a woman who was driving, and she was in a minivan, a rented minivan with two guys, or actually five guys in the van. And so after they robbed a couple of houses, at least, 
is that they jumped in the minivan and they went they went racing down the street and she ran into an unmarked police car. So it's not like they were tailing them or investigating them. This they knew they were it was just dumb luck that she hit a cop car. Yes, but she wasn't gonna be able to get out of the neighborhood. I mean which I questioned to the cop, the sergeant. I talked to him on Saturday. I said, you know, why would they even choose this? There's only one way in and one way out. And he's like, I don't know. But he explained to me that this is all organized crime. This is like mafia. Mm -hmm. That before they even come into the United States, they have training camps where they simulate this is how you enter in. And if you're fast enough, you get to cross the border and you get to come into the United States. Wow. And so it's not just happening here in Phoenix. It's happened in Bel Air, uh, Los Angeles, San Diego, Detroit, Miami. I mean, it's actually casing the whole place. And they're hitting higher end neighborhoods. Correct. And uh, it's been, it's really, there's been tons of them happening in, you know, the Scottsdale, Fountain Hills, Central Phoenix Paradise area. Paradise Valley. Yeah. And so they're just, so they're just going through the whole neighborhoods. Uh, and so, you know, of course we have guns and, <laughs> and everything. So, you know, we were, you know, and I called my neighbor and I said, listen, just want to let you know it's going down. And he's like, I have more guns than the police department. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, <laughs> well, you know, you might want to turn your lights on and look like you're at home. That's but also all. let's be friends. <laughs> yes, exactly. So did they catch anybody? They did. They caught the woman when she crashed into the unmarked police car. Uh, they arrested her and then, cause she jumped out and some of the guys weren't jumped out. And they arrested two guys, but there's, I think there's still three at large right now. And did the cops know that they were about to hit this neighborhood or did, was it, like I said, it was just dumb luck a cop was sitting there? No, they knew they were going to hit this they neighborhood. They knew, okay. I mean, it was, it was too much of a orchestrated lockdown. I mean, nobody in, nobody out. And I even called uh, a guy that I know who lives like three doors down. And I said, listen, if you're, your, your house looks really dark. <laughs> I said, right. if you're trying to get in uh and he's like no because i went to dinner because i'm not even allowed out into the neighborhood wow and so um so it is it's it was it was quite frightening so now we have uh, security guards actually planted outside the gate uh because they are yesterday when we hired a security guard uh bearers out there talking to them and a rented minivan with two women came into the neighborhood how did they know it was a rented minivan? They scanned looked, the plates? Or Barry, Barry said it looked like a rented car. Oh, okay. And then they they saw our security guard, and then they just, Barry said, they put it in reverse and like went right down the street. So they weren't, that's so brazen. They just got busted there. Well, maybe they think, they're never going to think we're going to hit it twice in a row. Exactly. Exactly. Now, now, here's the other interesting part. Okay, so this happened on Friday. So on Monday... I go for my walk. You know me. I walk 25, 30 miles a week. And when I go on a walk, it's always a good time for me to talk to Ian because it's like uninterrupted time. I'm not on my computer mm -hmm. and we just kind of talk about what's going on and cars and girls and school and whatever it may be. And so this is a walk that I've gone on several times with him, obviously. Uh, I mean, meaning not with him, but yeah. talking to He's him. He's on the phone. Right. And... So I got like probably, I don't know, maybe two houses away from our house. I lost the cell phone signal. Okay. And then I go a couple of feet and then I get it back. They left the jammer? They, they must have left jammers all throughout this neighborhood because normally I would never lose him at once on this walk. Right. Okay. But I lost him, I counted, nine times. Nine times on this walk. We should go find him. I know, that's what I'm thinking. We should. Get on some phones, walk until they drop, and then start looking around. Well, they could be very small. And the small ones, the batteries last a couple of days. So they're probably going to be dead right pretty now. soon. Yeah. Uh, and then the bigger ones, like they're about, the batteries are about the size of a lunchbox, and they can last like for five days, maybe even longer. So it's, so what do you do? What do you do? Okay, because if they jam your Wi-Fi... Okay, then your ring doorbell, your security system, everything doesn't work. But you get the alert, but like your neighbor said, I just figured all oh, the internet's out, I'm fine. My neighbor across the street, he was he was up north, okay? And so he's sitting at a bar in Prescott or Payson or wherever he was, and at 7.05, he gets an alert that all his cameras shut off. And he's thinking like everybody else, mm -hmm. you know, battery, you know, internet went down, mm -hmm. no big deal. And then, but he, he said his battery, his uh, cameras came back on at 7.30. 
So they must have picked up the jammer. Right. And then took it with them. So the whole idea is that, that they, after they cased the neighbor's house to the left of us, and then they cased our house, is that they went up the street. So this Wi-Fi jam, I'm trying to think. You, the only way would be to have all your cameras hardwired. Exactly. That's the only thing. And see, our cameras obviously were still working because, you know, you can see the mm -hmm. videos and you saw the pictures. But you guys built that house, so you had it pre-wired for exactly. everything. Exactly. But, you know, someone like me, I just put it, I have cameras at my house, but it's so much easier just to put up a Wi-Fi camera. It works just as well. Right. But, yeah, this, I'm... And you know what? And so, and so and so I've been making fun of Barry for, I don't know, forever that we had a landline. <laughs> we still have a landline. <laughs> but we need a landline because there's an elevator in the house. And so um, because of the rulings and code Whatever. and yeah, everything yeah, like yeah. that, you need to have a landline for an elevator. Which, But I, I was always like, why do we need right. it? So but now I'm like, okay, you know, old school's okay. <laughs> Right? We could call 911 if we needed to. But even if you had a landline, if you had didn't have those cameras hardwired, yours would have all shut off. Correct. But everything's all hardwired. Let's look at the let's look at the one one more time at the video of the SWAT team coming in. That's so nuts, Kim. It is. It's very crazy. And you know, it's like uh, you know, that you just kind of feel like a sitting duck out there. Absolutely. Cuz everybody else was It's rolling. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. I mean, that's like, that's got to be 15 cops. Well, I counted 22 at once. This is the entire city of Phoenix SWAT department. Well, because this is a huge problem. Look at that. I mean, that's legit SWAT. Yeah, it is. And you never think, you never think while you're sitting there eating your chicken and broccoli that in 15 minutes we're going to be interrupted by 22 SWAT members. Okay, and then there were also helicopters overhead saying, if we spot you, you're arrested, saying it in English and Spanish. There were drones. They probably had four or five drones. Smart. All around. Um, I, was, I was very impressed. I was very impressed with the orchestration, uh, how they approached the property, how they approached me as the homeowner, uh, the, the follow-up from the sergeant, afterwards the follow-up saying you know can we get some of these videos maybe there's something we can do gave gave the time frame um john our it genius he was on the spot i mean i called him over the weekend and said can we pull some of these videos and and things like that did they ever see anyone on camera on your property they thought they did they thought they did okay and the dog smelt somebody that's what he told me okay and that but because of the fence they probably weren't able to get over the fence so they hit the fence uh, but there was a jammer that they left by the fence. On your property? Yes. You saw it? Yes. Crazy. Right? Yeah. How smart, though. I mean, what a use of technology for nefarious reasons. I know. This is organized crime. Absolutely. And they're going wild. I mean, I first heard about it, like, last week on Wednesday. Beth, I work with, her neighborhood got hit multiple houses. Oh, really? Yeah. And then... The word got around that uh, they're using the wash. So they're coming down the wash from the golf course because she lives in a gated community. So it's, you can't have a getaway car. And that's how they're getting in and out of the neighborhood is using the wash that hits the golf course and they have a car parked on the golf course. Well, big kudos to the city of Phoenix Absolutely. Police Department. Because uh, let me tell you, they are, this is the first police department in the entire country, the entire country, who has arrested anybody. I mean... That's impressive. It is. Very the, impressive. The fact they knew where they were going to hit has got to scare these guys. That they knew they were going to be there. So that means they have someone on the inside. They have some way of getting this information that they knew this was going to be the neighborhood. No. And I tell you, every cop, such a gentleman, so nice. Uh, and, you know, because as they kind of, as you know, as after they arrested, they still hung out. Right. Just to make sure, see if anything else was still going on. How are you feeling now? Um... You know, violated. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we have the alarm on all the time. Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, and always to make sure, you know, we, we haven't, we didn't go out to dinner at all. It's like, why would we go out to dinner? Because we're just going to be sitting here. We're like just telling them, just come on in. Right. 
Or you just got to leave, you got to do like a scene from Home Alone where you have, you know, you put one of those stand-up models on a, a train track. It's like, I'm a teenage. So it just looks like you're home at all times. That's what we should do. Although it could just be me pointing my finger at, at like, Barry, like, rah, rah, rah. Oh, uh, they're home. Okay. Go to the next house. God, I don't want to be on her bad side. Another domestic. <laughs> Another domestic. So um, if you want to come hang out with us, we have some exciting <laughs> things that happen over the weekend. So we're Kim the- and Barry leave their house for a month, so they <laughs> need people to come over and entertain them. You know what? That's for sure. <laughs> it is for sure. That's I mean, crazy. I'm already arranging house sitters. Yeah, you have you to. Know. Yes. So right if you want, now. Do you want a place to stay for a while? Yeah, sure. I'll get killed <laughs> by the cartel. All right. We're going to switch gears a little bit. When we come back, we're going to talk to Madeline Smith. She's super popular on TikTok. Uh, she gets hired by women to see if their spouse is cheating on them. Mm. Better watch out, Andrew. I am a good boy. Hey, it's uh, Kim Commando today. It's your Daily Fun Podcast, as I like to say, about all things digital. Just weeks left in our giveaway. That's right. Yeah. That $1,000 PC or Mac laptop could be yours, and you can enter to win right now at commando.com. Just got to try M. one newsletter. That's well, it. It's not a big deal, folks. How many emails do you get on a daily basis? One more? And this one's like you're actually going to read and interact with. And you're going to love it. Yes. It's going to be amazing. It's going to it's going to uh, change your life. It's going to make you smarter. You're going to have thinner thighs, a smaller waist. I don't, I don't think you can make any you're, of these you're promises. You're going to grow more hair, Andrew. Oh, I'm definitely signing up. <laughs> I'm going to sign up three to four times. Where's Arturo? Arturo Torres. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard from Arturo ever since I've made it, ever since I've been making Kim loves your name. Get, love his name. Get in response. It's awesome. All right, so uh, if you use TikTok, you may have noticed that it seems like a lot of people are having affairs. Really? <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, Madeline Smith, okay, she's gorgeous. She, she is. She but is she, a knockout. She couldn't do this unless she wasn't gorgeous. Because right. that's part of her whole, I don't want to call it an act, scheme, her test, uh, her loyalty test is that, you know, she's reaching out to these guys, some of them famous, some of them just, you know, scoundrels, and she's sending them pictures and using her ap- uh, appearance from her Instagram to bait them in to see if they'll uh, cheat on their partners. Yeah, and then they look at her and they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, so is it really right? I mean, is it something that you should be doing? I mean, uh, she runs about 100 loyalty checks. That's what she calls every week. And she says that out of 10 guys, how many people flunk? Eight. Yeah. Eight. Eight out of 10 flunk. That is just so sad. So joining us right now on Kim Commando today is Madeline herself. Hi, Madeline. Hi. How are you guys? Oh, great. So um, how did you come up with this idea? Well, that is actually my most commonly asked question, and it's something that just kind of fell into place. Um, What happened was years ago, I had helped some friends with some intense uh, legal battles and custody battles. I've testified in court cases. um, And then it just, my fiance was like, you know what? You've been doing all these things for women, so why don't you put it out on TikTok in the form of a loyalty test and see what happens? I'm like, no one's going to care. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was right. I was wrong. <laughs> so. And so, so what happens? How do you do this? So essentially what happens is when a woman reaches out to me, I try to get a feel for exactly what kind of red flag she's seeing. If, you know, it's just purely intuition. If she is, um, if the guy has a history of, being uh, secretive and that answer is almost always yes and just based off of his personality his profile things like that then I will approach them in the way that I think will work the best talk to them see if they're willing to deny that they're in a relationship or maybe they don't care Um, some guys are like I'm married but they don't they're still down to meet up and then (laughs) I send the screenshots to the girl, block the guy, have a very long block list. I bet. <laughs> I bet <And>, you do. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and that's essentially it in a very small nutshell. Cause there's of course a lot of emotions that go into it. There's a lot of nuance. It's not 
always that straightforward. There's a lot of uh, women whose lives I get invested in who have become good friends that it just, it wow hurts my heart for them. So, so, so what do you say in that first DM to the guy? It could be, I don't want to give away all my secrets. Here's, okay. But <laughs> here's the thing, Kim. She doesn't have to say much with some of these guys. Some of them, it's True. just hi. Oh, I mean, she's be- and you're beautiful, Madeline. And, and then they they're gorgeous. sending well, videos and inappropriate pictures immediately, right off the bat. Really? Yes. I mean, I, th- I thought, I mean, I would think like if they were in like in a committed relationship, like you'd have to have that warm up stage. You'd think. <laughs> okay. No warm up. Always. Sometimes. Now, not always. As you, are you worried as you become more popular? that, you know, you become more recognizable that these guys that you're trying to give the loyalty test to are going to see your picture and know that who you are and what you do and immediately are going to be like, no, sorry, I'm a good little boy. I've never cheated on my princess. Yes and no. I do have, uh, I have girls that I will subcontract out oh, work to. Nice. And nice. also it's not really something that, guys are looking up on TikTok. No, that's a good point. It didn't show up on, it showed up on my girlfriends, my loyal girlfriend that I am never would cheat on <laughs> and I'm extremely good. Good. loyal I'm to. Uh, it showed up on her feed. She knew exactly who you were immediately, wow. but I had never seen yeah. it because, you know, my feed is sports cards and cooking and all that stuff. My my audience and my videos are anywhere between 90 to 95, sometimes more percent female. So it's mm-hmm. not something that's being recommended to males. So so what are some signs that a guy's cheating? Well, in the digital age of just our whole life is, is digital, which is wonderful because it obviously gives us so many different capabilities and we're able to connect with people in a way we never have before. But then uh, that also opens the door for a lot of secrecy. So I always say the number one thing to look for is secrecy with their phone. And I talk to a surprising amount of women who have been married for 10 years and aren't allowed to touch his phone. No. And that's really wild. Oh, it's so common. Yeah. I'm not talking about like, hey, you've been dating for three months. You should have full access. That's Mm -hmm. different. So, you know, I, I say these things and, you know, there's, there's rules to them. There's guidelines, meaning like, you know, you can't have full access to someone's phone when you first start dating. That's not fair, you know, but yeah, if you're married and you're not allowed to touch their phone, there's something wrong. Yeah. There's something weird going on. You know, I, I know a couple, they've been married for, I want to say like 20 years and mm-hmm. he won't allow her to put on find my friends. Which is I, that, is that a red flag? Oh, yeah. I think that, yeah. I mean, I didn't want to say anything to her, but I was like, you know, if you don't, I mean, if you can't look at your phone and know exactly where he is at any given moment, that's... I've I've only been dating my girlfriend for a year and a half, and we both track each other's phones. Yeah. And I'm not even, that's not even a marriage. Right. Exactly. Those who have nothing to hide, hide nothing. Mm -hmm. So... Like I said, yeah. I'm very loyal. I have nothing to hide. There's no reason <laughs> you get an email from Jennifer Cole, just delete it. <laughs> just say. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have to really pull out the big guns for that one. Now, I was going through some of your videos, and mm-hmm. I don't see the the happy endings a lot. Is that yeah. because people don't want to watch those, or is it because they're not frequent enough for me to see them? It's a little bit of both. So... I don't post a lot of the passes because the passes are really, there's no content to them. You know, it would just be me saying like, I reached out to this guy. He uh, told his girlfriend or his wife and blocked me. But I I think it it shows the other side of of us good guys, us faithful guys. Nobody nobody cares about the good guys. We want to hear about the bad guys. I just want the drama. Okay. Yeah, there was so, never an episode of Maury Povich where everybody shook hands at the end. <laughs> Love you, <laughs> kumbaya. Exactly. Okay, so now how Jerry Springer got on the air. <laughs> so what happens when, when, like, have you ever had a woman say, like, oh, you have him all wrong. He would never do that. Yes, I have. It's really interesting, the psychology that goes behind that, because I've had women reach out and say, I know for a fact that my husband will pass. I know it. But here, will you just do it for fun? 
you know, and I'm like, well, okay, so you're going to spend your money on confirming something that you seem to know, and then they end up failing. And then it's like, big blow. Well, you know, but if you're going to do that, you have to have some inkling. You have to have right. some sign, right? That Totally agree. You know, that yeah, you something's wrong. What does it cost to have a loyalty test? So I have different prices based off of, you know, how much effort it is. Sometimes mm-hmm. girls want me to build a relationship for like a couple of months. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, wow. Or talk to them on the phone or FaceTime and, you know. All of that. So, <laughs> your eyes. If, <laughs> you're like, oh my God. <laughs> so, if you, you know, if you just want me to reach out and see how it goes, uh, it's $45. Okay. But then, of course, you know, because we are pretty slammed with requests, then, you know, if you want an expedite fee, you're kind of like a VIP, you know, fee where you have like my number and things like that, because I can't obviously make myself available to everyone all the time, then that will fluctuate. So, that's not bad. So on these FaceTime calls, if the guy asks you to get like, you know, down and dirty, how do you handle that? Oh, I just tell him like, well, maybe later. Or I say, well, my kids are here right now. I can't do it. Oh, that's a good one. Right, that's a good that's one. really smart. Yeah, well, when all else fails, just blame the kids, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, mom, is that, was that, I just heard mommy. Was that what I heard, uh, mommy? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. They know what I do too. So I'm like, guys, be quiet. I'm, I'm filming a, a video for a, for this guy and they're like okay and they like stop everything like, oh, did you catch him yet like, you know that that would be it'd be so funny like on bring your mom to work day right. <laughs> oh my god yeah but yeah, that's the thing they're in on it probably all the kids in her class and their school knows what she does i mean she's oh, no. huge on, no you don't think it reaches the no. younger demographics you don't get no. teenagers reaching out i do but i don't take anything that's not over 18. Okay. Have you ever, um, it, like, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, have you ever run into somebody like you're like, oh, I know this guy? Oh, yes. Um, really? I have, well, I didn't run into him so much as uh, I loyalty tested him a couple of years ago and ended up working on a project with his wife. She's local to California and uh, we, you know, do some business together and I went to one of her opening events and he was there and he kept looking at me (laughs) really confused and I just, you know, just gaslit him, you know? So you're in LA. If someone's in Alabama, Mm -hmm. how, how are you able to be more convincing to someone in another state, because, you know, if I was a cheater, but I, and I got a message from you and I saw on your IG that you're in Los Angeles, I'm not even going to waste my Listen, time. She, you know what? She's always wanted to go to Little Rock. It's on her vacation destination <laughs> list. Yes, I exactly. mean, come on. Is that, well, is that your setup? I'm going to be in Little Rock soon. And I think you're hot. Uh, something like that. You okay. know, can't give away all the secrets, that's but true. yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's part of it. And there's a lot of research that goes on and you know with my profile because I have traveled all over and internationally doing photo shoots then it made it a lot easier to you know be like look at all these places I'm going and then I'm going to be in your area next so nice she's got every angle figured out so have have you ever had any have you ever had anybody come to you saying like well I wouldn't have cheated I mean if you didn't reach out to me I mean, I just, oh, yeah. I just cheated because like, you know, you're hot. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't really yeah. count. Oh, totally. Um, and usually I block them before they get that word in, but, um, it's, I've, I've made, made it part of our terms and conditions, which they have to accept to move forward. And one, one of my terms is you do not confront them until I've had a chance to block them. So nice. before I had that very firmly put in place, I did get a couple messages that were like, you know, do you enjoy breaking up families? I'm like, um, no, but apparently you do. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. Usually I just say something like, have a great day, like have the day you deserve, and then a heart emoji. You don't have to give out names because that wouldn't be right. But oh, yeah, no, I- what profession have you had to do a test on of a famous person? Ooh, good question. Uh, the NBA. Okay. Um, MLB, UFC. Oh, athletes. Well, 
Yeah, oh, like, athletes. Yeah. See, there's your idols right there, Andrew. They're not my idols. I mean, I like betting on them, but otherwise, <laughs> I know they're awful people. Some of them, some of them. Well, well, yeah, they can be idols for different reasons. You don't have to envy their integrity or lack thereof. Okay, so so one last question. Sure. And and you can just give us a ballpark. How okay. much money are you making? Well, it wasn't full time until more recently, but oh, uh, I don't know, a couple extra thousand dollars a month is what it started out to, and now it's kind of boom. We're gonna see where it blossoms. Yeah, that's awesome. So I think you know yeah. what, I you know what I love entrepreneurs. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I mean, you know, which wait one 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 last question. How did you come? Sure. I mean, what, what was how, did? Would you just like come up with this idea overnight, or did somebody say, "Hey, would you do this?" Yes, it was. It was my fiance that. Oh, your fiance. Said, you yeah. did say that. That's right. Yeah, you did say yeah. That. that I did that just because I've done things not exactly in the way that you see on TikTok, but I have you know, helped with getting information and providing it to attorneys and courts and things like that. So he's like, you're pretty good at this. You should <laughs> well, help out some more. We all have our niche in life, you know, so. <laughs> it's also entertaining. I mean, even if you, yeah. if you don't need to test somebody, just go on either one of her channels on TikTok and watch the videos. They are very entertaining. You do a really good job. Yeah, especially, you do a great especially job. Especially with your supercomputer, uh, you do a really good job. <laughs> Well, thank you. That's that's all Danny. He's the he does the editing. I just, you know, go unhinged on camera and he edits it so I don't look as crazy. <laughs> well, you do a great job, Madeline. You do. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. You, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, it's 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 so fascinating to me. Things that that you wouldn't think of like five or 10 years ago. No. That are suddenly now a thing. And I love the fact that she has other women, that she can franchise this thing out. Yes. Go global. <laughs> she is. There are cheaters everywhere. Does he like a blonde, a redhead? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> What's his kink? <laughs> but, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we can find that person. Well, isn't that something? She's going to have like this whole empire. <laughs> yeah, it's a great business model. <laughs> All right. Uh, coming up, NASA. What's the story? NASA is looking for volunteers. Can I volunteer? Oh, Kim, I wish that you volunteer. <laughs> Please get the first in line. <laughs> I'm there. I'm there. You know, I did teach NASA. I think it was probably like right, right before COVID. I taught a cybersecurity seminar. Really? To every employee in NASA. This is not a joke. I, I mean, believe you. 66,000 people. Really? Yes. Did it, is that why they got hacked? I'm joke. That was a joke. It was just a little joke. You hurt my heart. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't think I can go on. The Kim Commando show with just Kim Commando when we come back because I'm <laughs> bounced. <laughs> hey, it's called Kim Commando Today. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Not Andrew Babinski <laughs> today <laughs> for a reason. I mean, just saying. It was a good, it was it was a quick witted joke. It was. It was a nice bit. Thank you. But I let's kind of that. try to keep that to yourself. All right. Well, I'll keep it shut. <laughs> hey, listen. Don't forget to share this out. One person. That's all. And then if you are uh, listening as the podcast, we appreciate that. Make sure that you also try us out every once in a while as a video cast. You can also stream us wherever you get your videos. Rumble, uh, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook. We haven't asked for comments. Oh, yeah, we got to get comments for the last before the last segment. Yeah, so if you are watching, give us some great comments. Love to get your feedback. If you have any questions, now's the time to send them uh, because Maddie's going to be bringing us down the comments in just a few seconds. And before we get to all of that, NASA needs volunteers for yeah, what? Four people. NASA is looking for four people who are willing to live in a 1,700-square-foot barrack and simulate living on Mars for a year. I don't, I'm not going to volunteer. You already raised your hand. I'm putting it down. There's no takesies, backsies. Okay, four people in 1,700 square feet for a year? Correct. Not now, me. There's a little bit of an outside area that's going to simulate uh, Mars. <laughs> and uh, there's a brick building machine out there and a weather station. But most of the time will be spent in the four rooms, the bedroom, the bedroom, not bedrooms, the, the bed bedroom, okay. the gym, the recreational area, and then the bathroom and kitchen. It's where, how it was described, but I'm hoping those are at least separated by a wall. Something. <laughs> uh, the criteria for it is you have to be between uh, 30 and 55 years of age. You have to be in good health. 
Okay. Uh, you can't have any ga the things that you couldn't have gastro issues. Oh, because you're going to want to stink the place up. <laughs> so tutors are not welcome. Uh, and then you have a couple of uh, physical things you need to be able to. You also need to work in STEM for at least three years mm -hmm. or have an educational background in science technology. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't have that. No. Yeah, <laughs> there's so many things that are ruling out. <laughs> no, it's just, <laughs> well, you know, the whole gastronomic. I mean, I want to say anything. Now, they're taking applications until April 2nd. So you got to hurry. And uh, it's a volunteer position, but you actually get paid. How much? Ten bucks an hour. That's it? For only waking hours. No way. Yes. Only so waking hours? You're sleeping for free, Kim Commando. No. So they're saying it'll be, a, if you stay for the whole 12 months, if you last the whole 12 months, and you're not a, you know, a heavy sleeper, uh, you should make about 60 grand in the year. That's awful. It's not enough. It's not. To be a guinea pig, a science. Now, they're saying, and I don't know if I believe this, that by the end of 2030, 2039, okay. we're going to have people living on Mars. You said 2039 or yes. 2030? The end of 2030. The 2030s. Oh. oh, okay, I see. So by 2030, or sooner, by 2039 or sooner, we're going to have people living on Mars. Would you go? I have young kids. Won't um, they be older then? Yeah. I don't think, if they told me, honestly, this is, I think we've talked about this on the show. If they said you're getting on a spaceship and you're just going... I would be interested because I really, I am so curious what is out there. But if you think about it, it takes what, eight months to get to Mars? Yeah. I mean, in my lifetime, how far can I go? I so want to know what's really? out there. You know what? You are interested in this. I am. I can, tell. I can see it, your face. My mind cannot even comprehend how far, you know, we think Phoenix to New York. Well, that's far. Oh, yes. That's 3,000 miles. I got to drive to Mesa. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> My mind cannot comprehend how big, vast, and far space is. How many millions of years we are okay. from the next galaxy. You're not going to get that in Houston you know, when you're sitting there in the simulation. I'm no, just saying. you're not. You're absolutely not. But I mean, you know, they're going to test you. But, you know, the people are actually going to be guinea pigs because you're going to have this full physical and medical workup on you while you're there. Um but I, I don't, first of all, I don't know why we're sending people to Mars. You can't live on Mars. I mean, every other year, the whole thing fills with dust and you can't even breathe in. Wait, there's, that sounds like Phoenix. There's, <laughs> there's 700 times the amount of radiation on Mars than there is on Earth. I don't know why. We got to find our Earth too, because Mars ain't happening. Well, you know, we have that. I mean, like, you know, the moon. Yeah, that's. I was actually thinking this while I was reading this story. I was like, why are we so fixated on living on Mars and not on the moon? I'm not really sure. I don't really know. I wonder if it's a real estate price thing. You know, my nephew recently lost his job at NASA. <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> he worked in mission control. Did he? <laughs> yeah. He misheard when somebody said it's lunchtime. <laughs> uh, he just sent the <laughs> rocket. <laughs> And so I hope, he, I hope he lands on his feet. Oh, good one. <laughs> All right, still to come, we have some Gen Z slang. And see, it's our mission to make sure that when you are talking to the Gen Zer in your life, that you know exactly what you're saying. And they're not making fun of you. And they're not talking behind your back because you're just not groovy. Bruh. All right, it's Kim Commando today, every single day. And oh, the comments. Oh, it's comments. You move so fast, we can't even interject. We're kind of time schedule. Time is money. Here she comes. Here she comes, walking down the street. Da, 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 Get the funniest da, da. looks from everyone we meet. Okay. Hey, hey, it's the Maddie. Hey, hey, it's the Maddie. <clears throat> Good? Yes. All right, so it's Kim Commando today. Every single day, get this, today, every single day. I just made that connection. 
Boom. So smart. <laughs> yes, he can do it. Uh, Monday through Friday. So it's not every day. Oh, yeah. But Saturday and Sunday, you can like relive your best days. But Kim Commando today-ish is not a good enough uh, name for a podcast. <laughs> every once in a while. Today-ish. <laughs> Maybe, maybe today. Kind of. <laughs> You're here. But uh, it's not the same as the Kim Commando Show. No. The Kim Commando Show is the three-hour big weekend show on 425 stations. And if you want that commercial free, you can get that on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. So wherever you are. And I really wish that somebody would sign up for Kim Commando sh- the Kim Commando Show on Spotify. Just Even if you just do it for one month. Why is that? Because Jeremy makes fun of me. That nobody has signed up on Spotify? One person. Hey, you got one. I know. Super fan. And he, I keep saying, like, you know, we will find the Spotify people. And if, how long has it been? A couple of weeks. Oh, that's not, oh, come on. I thought, it, I thought you were going to say months or a year. It was, but I didn't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. He should continue to make fun of you, then. <laughs> All right, so uh, if you wanted to get the Kim Commando Show commercial free... Okay, you want to go to Apple Podcasts and search for Kim Commando Show or Spotify, yes. Kim Commando Show. I heard it's so much better on Spotify. It's amazing on Spotify. Audio quality is pristine. All right, before we talk about Gen Zers, here's some comments. I did make a mistake. Did you? Yeah, Jimmy J and uh, Chuck Rodrique, they said those were not AKs, 47s. Those were AR-15s. Come on. Seriously, Kim. I know. I mean, that was bad. You're misinforming the masses. I know. Jimmy J, uh, he says, this story's nuts. They just caught one gang. Maybe it'll be catch and release. Mm, can you believe it's happening, though? He said, you have to think they're going to hit twice. I hope they don't hit twice. You think they get scared enough. They just kind of move on. But they're not done. They're going to keep doing this. Yes. Uh, Nancy Gilboy says, it's scary and so sad. It's happening all across the country. We're talking about the SWAT team and the gangs from South America. Yeah, na- Kim's neighborhood got hit by the uh, the organized crime unit that's robbing everybody's houses. It's time to ride. He says, oh, Kim, don't show your house. You don't want your floor plan to be known. I only showed the outside of the house. But this is a good, this is a good point. One of the sergeants told me that when they, they'll case the neighborhood... And then they'll pick the house that has pictures of the house up on Zillow so that this way they know exactly where to get in the house, especially like, and sometimes there's floor plans in Zillow. So if you have your house in Zillow, Redfin, whatever it may be, what you need to do is claim your house. And then once you claim it, get rid of all the photos. Right. And so that's what you need to do. Well, if it's not in the market, there's no reason for that information to be on the internet. Exactly. Uh, Claire Reed says, God bless the honest, brave policemen who risk their lives daily to protect our families all over America. 1,000% with you, Claire. Uh, Gary says, my wife has access to my location 24-7. Yes. Okay, that's like what said, it is. A woman I'm dating. Does Barry have access to your location? Of course he does. Well, sorry. I was, <laughs> I was hoping you would be like, yeah, of course. We trust each other. It's fine. That was a little... <laughs> Do you, can you watch him? Yes. Now, have you ever turned it on, find my friends, and he's not there? Yeah, that's normally because his phone died. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Same thing happens to me all the time. Okay. Uh, and But sometimes it's like, <laughs> I don't know if I should, sometimes if I'm like, I need a walk and I need a break, I turn off the location <laughs> So he can't come up behind you in a car <laughs> yes. and honk at you? No, oh my God, I need some private time. <laughs> okay. uh, Jimmy J. also writes, the most attractive woman in the room or online can become ugly in an instant with what she says. Suggesting infidelity turns her ugly real quick. I get what he's saying, but these guys... I think there's a history here. Yeah, but these guys, guys there's they a want to have infidelity. They want to cheat on their partners. They're serial cheaters that she is hooking up with. I'm serious. Go watch some of her TikTok videos. It happens so fast. You know what? We don't have time for the Gen Z, so we're going to do that tomorrow. All right. You know. Uh, but I will tell you one thing. I'm so glad that the that's now called hashtag instead of pound. Oh, why? Because otherwise the pound me too movement would have a whole new meaning. <laughs> it went blue. I like it. <laughs> Watch out. All right. So thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, as always, we'd love to get your comments. You can send them to podcasts at commando.com. And as always, we'll be here tomorrow. So um, make sure that you look really good because we want to be able to, you know, make sure that you look good. Are you talking to me? No, I'm talking about the viewers. Oh, good. Because I'm yes. just going to look the same. All I right. look like I look. Very handsome. Oh, thank you. I lied. I know.